With this video, we're going to take our first step into performing inference on two populations. Specifically, we're going to look at the difference of two means. For this example, we're going to compare the typing speeds of two different keyboard layouts, the QWERTY keyboard, which is what most people use, and the Dvorak keyboard, which is a more uncommon keyboard layout. A sample of 20 QWERTY users found a sample mean of 62 words per minute with a sample standard deviation of 18 words per minute. A sample of 8 Dvorak keyboard users found a sample mean of 71 words per minute with a sample standard deviation of 13 words per minute. We want to know if the mean typing speed of the Dvorak users is significantly greater than the average of QWERTY users at the 5% level of significance. Now the problem that we have right now is that we're working with two populations simultaneously and we're comparing the means. These populations are independent from one another, so we need a test that can handle two means, which we don't have just yet. This test is going to be the difference of two means test. Here's a visual representation of the difference of two means test. Up top inside the boxes, we have our populations. These populations have population mean mu1 and mu2 with population standard deviations sigma1 and sigma2. Clearly, we can't gather information from every single subject in the population, so we take a random sample from each. From population 1, we get a sample mean of x1 bar, a sample standard deviation of S1, and a sample size of N1. From population 2, we get a sample mean of X2 bar, a sample standard deviation of S2, and a sample size of N2. Note that these are independent samples from two different populations. There's absolutely no overlap between the two populations. Our ultimate goal here is to test to see if mu1 is equal to mu2 by comparing x1 bar and x2 bar. More specifically, the difference of two means test is used to compare the means of two independent populations. There are two conditions that we need in order to run this test. First of all, the population variances have to be unknown. And second, the sample means must be normally distributed by the central limit theorem. Either we take a large enough sample size from each population, or the original populations have to be normally distributed. If these two conditions hold, the test statistic for doing a difference of two means test follows a t-distribution, and it's calculated by taking the difference of the two sample means, x1 bar minus x2 bar, and subtracting off d. d is going to be our hypothesized difference, the difference that we think might exist between the two population means. Most of the time, d is going to be equal to zero, but there are times when d is going to be some other number. We're looking for some other difference between the means. In the denominator, we have the square root of s1 squared divided by n1 plus s2 squared divided by n2, the sample variance for each population divided by its corresponding sample size. Now, the degrees of freedom for this test are a little bit messy to calculate. I'm giving you the equation here. I'll never actually have you work this out by hand. We'll do the example later on in the video. But in order to calculate the degrees of freedom, we're going to actually use Excel. Don't worry about doing this out by hand. I did want you to see, however, where the equation for the degrees of freedom is coming from. Let's go ahead and set up the hypothesis test. Clearly, we don't have the population standard deviations, so the first condition checks out. Let's assume that we're taking our samples from normally distributed populations, so we also have the second condition. Notice that the sample mean for the Dvorak users was 71, and the sample mean for the QWERTY users is 62. It's a little bit easier for this test to keep the larger sample mean as population 1, so we'll use the Dvorak keyboard users as population 1 and the QWERTY keyboard users as population 2. What you'll find is that this keeps the test statistic positive, and that's always a little bit nicer to work with. Here's a summary of all of the information that we have. Our sample mean for the Dvorak users is 71. The sample variance for the Dvorak users is 13 squared, which is 169. And the sample size for the Dvorak users is 8. On the QWERTY side, 
The sample mean for the QWERTY users is 62 words per minute. The sample variance is 18 squared, which is 324. And the sample size is 20. In this case, we're just interested if these population means differ. So what this means is that our hypothesized difference is going to be zero, and we're doing this test at the 5% level of significance. Let's set up the hypotheses. The null hypothesis should reflect the notion that the average typing speeds for the two keyboards are equal. So, H0 is going to be the mean for the Dvorak users is equal to the mean of the QWERTY users. Since we're interested in seeing if Dvorak users type faster than QWERTY users, the alternative hypothesis should be that the mean of the Dvorak users is greater than the mean of the QWERTY users. Now the one problem with setting up our hypotheses like this for the difference of two means test is that there's no hypothesized difference. We need a number that we can plug into the test statistic. To fix this, we'll subtract the mean of the second population, which is the QWERTY users, to the other side. In the null hypothesis, this gives us the mean of the Dvorak users minus the mean of the QWERTY users is equal to zero. In the alternative hypothesis, we have the mean of the Dvorak users minus the mean of the QWERTY users is greater than zero. Zero now becomes our hypothesized difference. Step two is to calculate the test statistic. We already know that the test statistic is going to follow a T distribution. The way that we calculate the test statistic is by taking the difference in our sample means, x1 bar minus x2 bar, and then subtracting off the hypothesized difference d. In the denominator, we have the square root of the sample variance from the first sample divided by its sample size, plus the sample variance from the second sample divided by its sample size. Taking our statistics, we have 71 minus 62 minus 0. The hypothesized difference is 0. That gives us our numerator. The denominator is going to be 169 divided by 8 plus 324 divided by 20, which gives us a final test statistic of 1.473. We also need to calculate out the degrees of freedom. Like I said earlier, the equation for calculating the degrees of freedom is really messy. It involves not only the sample sizes, but also the sample variances. So you'll never have to work this out by hand, but I do want to do it here in the video to show you exactly where the degrees of freedom are coming from. Our degrees of freedom is going to be the sample variance from our first sample over its sample size, plus the sample variance from the second sample over its sample size. That quantity squared goes in the numerator. In the denominator, we again have some linear combination of the sample variance and the sample size, s1 squared over n1 squared divided by n1 minus 1 plus s2 squared over n2, that quantity squared divided by n2 minus 1. Plugging in all of the numbers that we know gives us 169 over 8 plus 324 over 20, that quantity squared divided by 169 over 8 squared over 7 plus 324 over 20 squared divided by 19. Working this out gives us 17.96. Notice that it is possible to get a decimal for your degrees of freedom here. If that happens, all we want to do is round down to the next closest integer. This particular test is going to have 17 degrees of freedom. Now that we have the test statistic, we can calculate the p-value. According to the alternative hypothesis, we have an upper one-sided test. The p-value for an upper one-sided test is going to be the area above 1.473 in the t-distribution with 17 degrees of freedom. Since this test statistic follows the t-distribution, we can't get the exact p-value from the t-table. We have to use Excel. If you go into Excel and actually work through it, you'll find that the p-value for this test is 0 0.0795. With the p-value, we can go ahead and make a decision. Our decision is going to be to fail to reject the null hypothesis because our p-value of 0 0.0795 is greater than the level of significance of 0.05. What this tells us in terms of the conclusion 
is that there's not enough evidence to conclude that the average typing speed of a Dvorak keyboard user is significantly greater than the average typing speed of a QWERTY keyboard user. Let's fill in another cell in our table. This was the first test that we did that involved two populations. We were interested in comparing the means of those populations, so the cell in the bottom left corner is going to be the difference of two means test.